I heard that you at one point were considering um, going whole hog and becoming a monk. <laughs> I'm going to the Walnuts Leisure Centre in Orpington to see Andy, aka Shri Enzian, who's a Shaolin soft fist expert. We met at a Tai Chi competition in Stoke Newington around 2016. We were both in the other category of Tai Chi, so he was doing his Shaolin soft fist and I was doing the Wudang Pai style of Tai Chi. He won that competition. Uh, he, was, he was really good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do you want to join in? Yeah, thanks. I'm Shi Lenjing. I'm a Chinese person. I'm from London. I learned Shaolin Kung Fu, Shaolin Qigong, Shaolin Rou Quan, Chen Shi Tai Ji. I've been curious about Shaolin Sophis since I first heard about it because it's similar to my area of expertise, Tai Chi. So today, I'm coming to Shi Enjin's class to see what Shaolin Soft Fist actually is. So in, in what way does the practice differ from the Shaolin external style? Um, it's a lot slower, obviously, and because it's slower, you get the chance to be more in tune with your movements. Obviously, you can practice faster forms in slow motion as well, but with this, you can focus on the relaxedness of the joints, you can focus on the movement of the breath around the body to try to control your emittance of energy or your flow of energy. Mm -hmm. And also long, slow, deep breath, you can find more calm and relaxedness as opposed to when you're doing something that's quite fast and there's a lot of pressure behind you in order to move at such a speed. Opening, sink, exhale, shift, twist to the right. But Rochman is quite new in comparison to Chen in comparison to the majority of styles of Taiji really. The lineage is just three or four generations. So it's just something that was created in the 20th century. So its perception is growing in the West because people are becoming more mindful of themselves. You know, people are transitioning to different things like through vegetarianism and veganism. Does anyone know what Wudang is? So there's two famous schools of martial arts in China. One is Wudang, which is a mountain, Wudang Shan. And one is Songshan Shaolin Si, which is Songshan Mountain. So Shaolin and Wudang, okay, so there's two eminent styles, you know what it is. <laughs> so there's two eminent styles within China of Kung Fu or Tai Chi or just say martial arts practice. Yeah. Okay. So Lucia has a Taoist background and Shaolin has a Buddhist background. Do you see Buddhist principles reflected in the movements of the Shaolin Sophists? Um, so I see Taoism throughout Tai Chi. Do you see Buddhism throughout the soft fist style. I see the contemplation of your movements and of yourself through the movements and especially when you step away from the combative approach and you look at the more harmonious mind-body connection then I definitely see the Buddhist values there. Weight off your leg. I think it is a... I don't think it is massively different from Tai Chi, no. I think possibly the, the way that you train it is different. And the, I'd say the whole thing is generally a bit faster paced. That bit at the start was very slow, the Qigong at the start, and the, the postures are more acrobatically or gymnastically challenging, as it were. How do you find it compared to training the Chen style? I think for me quite a lot of it was in the, the training style and it's almost like the techniques you use to train the soft styles. I can see that they're okay. sort of Shaolin techniques. I found yeah, that quite okay. interesting. That's interesting. With Chen I've been practicing since about 2001 and with the, Shao, the, the Sophist I've known about it for a long time but I didn't get the chance to practice in about 2010 but with the teacher. With the Sophist teacher it's been on and off for the last nine years. Whereas with the Chen teacher, who I'd studied with prior to that, I was there every day. I was happy to learn the form, but I didn't really want to delve into that weapons arts with Chen style as well. And then when I saw the Rao Chen teacher do um, Sri Anjuan, when I saw him demonstrate his sophist style and the explosive energy, then back to this relaxed state again and continuing to go bang, suddenly this energy comes out again. I was like, yeah, okay. This is encompassing, like I said earlier, the Chen and the Shaolin together and seeing those two together, those two melded together, yes, that's exactly all I want to learn. 
yeah, I, I think for me, I find that connection more. Um, I heard that you at one point were considering um, going whole hog and becoming a monk. <laughs> so, so, so what, what was that? That was a very long time ago. So I remember um, I had a grading many, many years ago with a teacher who I was training with. And he said to me, um, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? I said, I want to be better than you. Not being arrogant, oh, I want to be better than you. I said, I want to be better than you. And he looked at me, he was, had his head on his, in his exam sheet, looked at me, smiled, and then continued like, doing the exam. But then after that, I thought to myself, yeah, you know, I'm not in a relationship. Maybe I could become a monk. You know, maybe there's something I'd like to do, spend my time practicing Kung Fu, living the Kung Fu dream. So, I, yeah, I, I kind of looked at that path for a little while but at that time I'd fallen in love with my wife and had a family and so me going into a monastic life now would never ever happen. I mean I considered it for a bit yeah. and I kind of got my life to a point where I could just go over there okay. and stay yeah. and then having been um, I don't know up the mountain for about three or four months I was okay. like I need to dance, <laughs> I need to go somewhere and listen to some music That's and have thing, a dance. Yeah. I mean, we're so spoiled aren't we? Our senses are so spoiled here. Just used to it now. <laughs>